right, so Magic Templates. How many of you guys are currently working with Magic Templates, or at least have tried to complete the Magic Templates? Or how many of you guys don't have, have no idea what a Magic Template is? Um, Kelly, do you, uh, I just actually shared my screen, so you should be able to see right now the Rhinestone World Facebook page, or excuse me, uh, website. You got it? All right, perfect. Um, so Magic Templates, all right, so let me show you exactly what Magic Templates are. So they are actually download files that we've created, and they can only be worked with in the actual Design Wizard software. All right. So there, there are specific, there's special designs that we've created that are really going to save you a lot of time and money in the designing process. All right. So let me show you right here. If you go to Design Download Files, and then you'll see all the different categories here. You'll see at the top here, the second row, we have TRW Magic Templates. All right. So if I click on TRW Magic Templates. You'll see all the different categories that we have for the magic templates. All right, so let's say if we're looking for a specific uh, sport. So in this case, let's say we want to go with cross country. So we can click on cross country here, and there's our design or magic template based off of cross country designs. All right, so you can see here, right off the image, you'll see that most of our designs are going to have some type of mascot or um, some kind of some some type of emblem. To kind of make the design come together, all right. And then what else you'll see is the different color boxes here. So yeah, no problem. No, <laughs> I was taking a nap. Must be rough, huh? Rough life. Taking a nap at 3 p.m., huh? Lucky you, lucky you. Uh, but welcome, Suzanne. Nice to have you in here. All right. So again, here we have um, the, this particular pattern. Here is again we have the different boxes here. And you'll notice with each box or each, uh, I guess you can, we'll call them uh, again, envelopes, um, we have different colors. So we have this one right here is brown. Now you'll see that all the bottom uh, boxes here are going to be the same color. All right. And that's going to make a lot more sense once we actually go to the software and show you how to utilize the different color boxes that we have here. All right. Now, again, I, I did see a lot of you guys are, have begin working with the templates. Um, and the reason I'm doing the free webinar here is I've got a lot of questions on how to utilize the templates. And I'm also going to cover how to actually create your own. All right. It's not something that that's not something too difficult. Um, I think we can definitely cover that here in the beginner webinar. Um, a little freebie, a little extra freebie there at the end. All right. So let's go ahead and jump right to it and show you guys exactly how we can utilize and incorporate these magic templates for your everyday design. All right. So let's go. Here, so here we have Corel Draw. Now I am going to be working in X7. All right, so if you guys have X8, um, for the most part, it's very similar. At least the features and the different icons are going to be very similar. Um, but if there, if there is something that you guys don't see on your end that I'm I'm doing on my end, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to go back and uh, repeat myself. Or if I need to bring up X8, I can show you guys where it is on X8 as well. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, jump right to it. Again, this is only a 45-minute webinar, so we want to make sure that we're, we're we're able to knock out all 45 minutes worth. And also, guys, this again, this is a free webinar. It's a, it's a beginner webinar, so I, I, I would recommend asking questions. Questions is how we're going to learn how to do this. So make sure you guys keep those questions coming. I'll be more than happy to answer those as I'm going. Joe said no distractions. Joe, I've gotten pretty, pretty good at the, reading the questions and answering them real quick while I'm still working. So... <laughs> Um, just, uh, again, I, I, I appreciate the questions, um, so keep them coming. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in um, our templates. All right, so again, most of our magic templates, you'll see they'll come in a pack. All right, so bring in the pack once I've purchased it and I've downloaded it to my desktop, I can then go to File, Import. All right, so File, Import, and then I can bring in that pack. All right, so I can go right here to Desktop, since I know that's where I saved it to. And then we go all the way down to TRW. All right, so it's going to be under TRW, and I believe it actually says TRW Magic Templates right afterwards, and they do. All right, so this one right here, um, let's go ahead and bring in. Um, oh, let me go to S. So the Sports Shadow. This is actually one that we just released here. Uh, really cool looking font, or to me file, but now of course I can't find it. Oh, right. Here. All right, so here's my Sports Shadow. All right, now this is the one that's actually on sale right now. So if you guys go to shop and then TRW Daily Deals, this will be the one right here. All right, so this is that brand new pack here. You can see we have that um, the sports shadow. So you have the shadow look to the text, and then we have again um, our again. In this case, we'll have the sports balls. You'll see the sports balls here. So we have the basketball, baseball, soccer, and football, and then we have the wrestling up here. Um, so very unique. 
The cool thing about these font or these templates as well is that they are all editable. So I can go in there and actually edit any of, of these templates and adjust them. All right, so I can bring out any of these footballs or sports balls here. The rest of those I can take out. Um, so I don't have to keep it the way it looks, the way you guys see it on here. All right. Already right, in your cart, Honcho. <laughs> all right, so right off the bat, you'll notice I bring in this file and it's all grouped together. All right, so the first thing we want to do is ungroup it. Now we can do that in many, in, in a couple different ways. We can either do that directly with the wizard. I can go down here to the bottom. So I'm going to select the image here, and you can see it's selected by these little boxes that are created around our design here. All right, so that tells me that my design is selected. I can go over here to the wizard, and at the bottom of the wizard, we have three different options for our grouping, all right? So we have group, we have ungroup, and ungroup all, all right? So again, ungroup everything. So let's go ahead and ungroup everything. Uh, Monica, so you're saying the football can have a number in it, for example. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And that's a great point there, Monica, and that's actually something I was going to cover um, was how to customize and add a little bit more customization to these designs here because obviously we're creating them from somebody um, for somebody special, somebody, you, you know, it's going to be more individualized to that particular parent. So that's a great resource to use is, is being able to add customizations like numbers um, to the actual design to even add more value to it. All right, but yes, Monica, that is actually something I had planned was actually to show how we can do that. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of this background here. This obviously, this background here, guys, is just for for us or for you guys to be able to see because we have a lot of white areas here. You see the, the white boxes here. So what I'm going to do right off the bat is we're going to go here to the where you see white. All right, so I'm going to select one of my white boxes here, and I'm going to go up here to the top of the wizard and hit select all same color. All right, by doing that, it selects all the white areas on my screen here, and then we can simply go over here and just change it. So let's just change it to an orange, something really ridiculous, um, because, again, that part of the design right there, once I remove this background, you won't be able to see it if it was white. All right, so that's the only reason why I changed the color. Now, why we use these vibrant, vibrant colors for, for this image, I'm not too sure. So let's go ahead and change the orange as well, just because it's I'm having quite a tough time seeing. The t okay, perfect. Are you guys able to see this better now? All right, it was the orange and the yellow and everything combined was a little bit too much for my eyes, so I had to change it up, all right? So I apologize. I, I haven't done really anything yet other than really change the colors for me to be able to work with this image or this design. All right, so guys, remember earlier I said that I that we've made this these designs so that you guys can edit these in in, in different ways and, and adjust them in different ways. So one of the ways is being able to remove the football. Again, this is what Monica was asking, so we can edit the football. Absolutely, you can see there we can remove that football if we wanted to. If there's a specific uh, vector file that you already have, you can add that to it. So again, they're they're very unique in the sense that you can still do a lot of editing. Um, you know, once after the fact that you, you've made the purchase of the file. All right, so let's go ahead and get right to it. So let's go with uh, who has a good school name that we can use. All right, so the concept behind this one, guys, we're going to go ahead and put the school name where you see all the yellow boxes up here. All right, so I see Tenant, I see Panthers. All right, let's see if we can get a duplicate. Oh, there's a the Panthers. All right, so we'll do Panthers. Panthers, Joe, you win. Oh, Kelly, Kelly said Panthers too. Okay. So we'll do Panthers, all right? So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to select the text tool right over here in Corel, and we're just going to zoom in here. Now I'm zooming in and out with my scroller on my actual mouse, all right? So I have my settings there for me to be able to zoom in and out just by the little wheel on my mouse. So that makes the zooming in and out a lot easier, and I can just point to a place where I want my mouse to zoom into, and that's how I'm able to zoom into different areas very quickly. All right, so if you guys are not working with a mouse, I definitely, definitely recommend it. All right, so let's go ahead and type in Panthers. All right, so Panthers. And let's go ahead and bring out our Fonts tab here. And let's go and make that all uppercase. All right, so all uppercase. And then let's go ahead and, uh, what do you think, just an impact font for now? Let's go ahead and select an impact font. All right, so that's good to go. So we got Panthers. The next thing we're going to put in here is going to be, let's do a number. All right, so in number. Now there's two spots on here. All right, a good way to see what you're supposed to put in the images or in those boxes there is just go ahead and refer back to the mockup. All right, so you can see right here in the mockup, it tells us with this image here, we can actually put 
the way that it was created was to put the date or the year. All right, so that's a pretty cool idea. You can put the year. All right, so the soccer, the soccer, uh, soccer league was from soccer season was from 2016, started maybe November, and it ended in April of 2017. So you have your two years. Um, so we can do it that route, or what we can do is we can put the year here, and we can put the we can put the number over here. So what do you guys think? How do you guys want to customize this here? What do you guys want to put as far as the left box here? So you guys want to go with the with the dates, the years. What do you guys think? All right, I like it, Kelly. Good idea. All right, so I got a lot of good ideas. I like the one where Kelly said 20 on one side and then 16 on the other side. Perfect. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go 20. We'll double click on impact, and then we'll click in 16, which is going to be placed on the other end here. All right. So everybody good so far? Everybody, everybody up to up to speed as far as uh, what we've done here and what we've accomplished so far. And you know what? Let's do this one, Kelly. We'll go. I'm sorry, uh, Monica. We're gonna go ahead and do this. Watch. Ready? I'm gonna duplicate that 20. All right. The way I did that, I grabbed the 20 here. I drug the mouse to the left hand side, and then I right clicked, all while holding down the left click. All right. So that duplicates that number for me. And if that seems a little bit too difficult to do. We can always go to the edit tab here in the wizard and then we have copy selected right here under the edit tab so i can just click on the 20 here all right so by clicking on the 20 i can then go over here to the copy selected to the right and then it's going to copy that number for me all right so just a quick little hint there um if you guys want to duplicate a certain object text or in this case a number all right so we got 2016 and then you know what because we had Monica mentioned, hey, can we customize in the center there? We can. So let's type in, uh, let's just do number seven. Why not? Number seven. And there's number seven. All right. So now we have our three numbers, our three digits here that are going to go into our magic templates. And then we have the Panthers that's going to go on the top. All right. So first thing we want to do is add Panthers to the top here. Now, let's go back to the edit tab here, which, okay, we're already under the edit tab. And we're going to look down here at the bottom where it says Magic Templates. So right down here is what we're actually working with. Now, don't be confused with the templates up here. All right, which these are Magic Templates, but these are the Magic Templates to separate your colors. All right, so I'll show you how these work at the end once we create our designs. But they are different. All right, so these are different than the ones that you find in the Edit tab down here. All right, so Magic Templates, these are the ones that we're going to work with our envelopes. And then the templates up here, the TW Magic Templates, are going to be your separation of colors. All right, so these are the ones that are under the templates, and then edit are going to be your magic templates. I know, I know, it's the same name. I understand, guys. I, I do apologize. Um, just know that the one that's under the edit tab is going to allow us to do the designing part of it, whereas the one that's going to be in the templates is going to help us create our templates, so separate our colors. All right, so first thing I want to do is we're going to go ahead and select the one yellow box up here. All right, so just one. Now, remember, guys, in the beginning, how I was able to select all the same colors all at once? You guys remember what button I clicked on the wizard to do that? Yes, select all same color. And can you tell me where that is located? Top right corner. All right, beautiful. Beautiful. And you are right. <clears throat> Bobby, you're correct. So top right corner right here, we have select same color. All right, so if I left click on select all same, or excuse me, select the same color, that's going to select all the yellow boxes. So you can see right there, we've very easily selected all the same box, all the all those boxes that we want to add the Panthers to. All right, so the next step is select the Panthers, the actual text. Now, how can I see, quickly select the text here without having to unselect all the yellow boxes? Do you guys know what's a quick little shortcut to be able to? Click on the Panthers there, so we can select the Panthers with all the yellow boxes. There's that one special key on the keyboard that we can click on to be able to select it. There you go, Kelly. And Kelly said Shift key. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and hold down Shift. So I'm holding down Shift right now. And then I'm going to left click on Panthers. Bam. All right, so by doing that, we've now selected. Let me go to zoom out a little bit more. All right, so this is what we have selected. We have all our yellow boxes here, or our yellow envelopes, and then the text. All right, so that's what we have selected. Now we're going to go over here to the magic templates, 
And this is going to be very important, guys. Can you guys read the bottom of the the bottom of the wizard right here? All right. Can you guys just see what that says? All right. It says right click deletes the template. All right. So that's very important. So what's going to happen is if I left click on the magic templates right here. All right. So not the one to the right, but this one right here. If I left click on it, you'll see what happens. It places the Panthers all on the yellow uh, envelopes that were created originally. All right. But you guys see what happened here? We still have that yellow box in the background. All right, so two things we can do. All right, so two things we can do. We can either get rid of the yellow boxes by selecting one. So let's select the yellow box, go into the top here and select all same color, and then hitting delete. So we can go ahead and delete those. All right, but again, that seemed like a couple steps that honestly were one too many steps. All right, we don't need to go through that process to just delete those, those background boxes. All right, the other step we can do is before we actually add the text to the boxes, let's go ahead and select all the same color here again, and then shift click on the Panthers. So instead of actually selecting, excuse me, instead of left clicking, let's go ahead and read what it says down there. You guys see that? It says right click deletes the templates. So if I go here to the magic templates and I right click on it, all right? So instead of doing my left click, I'm actually gonna right click on it. So right clicking on it, it gets rid of the boxes for me. You see that? So bam, just like that, we've had Panthers added to it, and now we can move on to the next section. All right. Now, real quick, I do want to go back real quick and show you one thing that you could do. All right. And the reason why we still give you the ability to leave the boxes in there is if you want to do something like this, where you want to, again, select all the same boxes, shift-click on the Panthers, and then left-click on that. So what I can do at this point is I can go here, select this right here, and then maybe do a back minus front, and then look at this turnout. So instead of just doing the Panthers in the text, now we have kind of that um, kind of cut through the back around there. So now we've kind of have a different style of text up there. All right, so you can still utilize that box if you wish. All right, you can still do cool things like this where you can actually knock the, knock the text right through the background. And now you have, instead of just letters, you actually have the box with the letters cut out through the, right through the inside of them. All right, so you guys see how we were able to do that there? Now, the one thing I would have done, because you guys see with the P, is kind of hanging off the side there. So one thing you could do is just shrink it down just a little bit, just a little bit, so it doesn't actually hang off the side of it, like right there. All right, so we're going to go right here. It's just a little bit off. So we can maybe go like that. So by doing that, now it won't actually hang off the side. So we can go again, back minus front, and you can see now we have a little bit of a border there. All right, so it's not completely cut off on the P there. All right, and then I would do the same thing with the S just a little bit there just to make sure it all gets together. But again, it's a different look now that we're that we're reaching rather than just having a text up there. All right, something a little more unique, a little bit different. All right. Everybody good on how we were able to accomplish that there? All right, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and go back a couple here. So if you guys see I'm hitting that little back arrow here to go right back to where we started. All right? So one more time, guys, what are we going to do? Select the yellow. What do I need to click on to be able to select all the colors, all the yellow boxes? All right, select all same color. You're right, you're right. Select all same color. And then we got that special key we need to click. Shift key, you got it. Shift click. Shift click on the Panthers. All right, and that's what I refer to, guys. When I say shift click, is basically holding down shift and then clicking on a, an object or a text or... Um, just an image, whatever it is that you're trying to select multiple times or if you're trying to select multiple objects at once, that's a very useful key, the shift key. All right. So again, we're going to go over here to magic templates. What's the special, what's the special click if I want to get rid of the background? You got it. Right click. Perfect. Right click. And there it goes. So now we got Panthers. And again, guys, you'll see with, with the magic templates, there's a lot of repetition involved. The most important thing, though, is that we're always selecting the envelope first and then the text. All right, so envelope first and then the text. That's one of the probably the biggest uh, question we get is why is this not working properly? And normally it's because we've selected the text first and then the actual box, all right, or the envelope. All right, so we have Panthers in there. Now let's go ahead and add our 20 to this area right here. All right, so again, do you guys remember what we got to do here? So I'm going to select the purple here. What do we need to do next?
Yep, select all same color. You're right, you're right. And then we got the 20 here. We still haven't selected that, so the shift click, exactly. And then finally, we're going to go down here to Magic Templates and right click. All right, so there's my 20. Let's do the same thing over here. Same color. Shift click on 2016. And then right click. Perfect. And then we have one last number to throw in there. All right, so everybody good so far on how we've been able to add those numbers to those Magic Templates there? And you can see... The nice thing about it is, guys, we don't have to go in there and individually place all those in there, all right? With a couple clicks, it's able to add them all to those templates. All right, so from this point on, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these guys so I don't have to have too many files on here. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these here, all right? And then we're going to bring this to the center. So now we're ready to add the 7 here. Now, what's going to be the easiest way for me to add that 7 right in there, guys? Watch this. If I select these two here and I click on the align center and middle, you see how it places it perfectly on the football there? Uh, Monica, knockout would be a good idea, but watch this. Watch this. You know what's going to happen, though, Monica? That's get, it's going to be a small text, and I'm glad you said knockout. All right, because with the knockout, here's the thing it's going to be, it's going to still give you a second color here, which in reality, honestly, I think with the football, I think it's going to be best if we just kind of knock it through. All right, so it's going to be basically the seven is going to be cut through the football. All right, so that way you don't have to worry too much about the tedious, uh, tedious factor of actually trying to press that little seven and make it fit inside the the football. All right, it could be a little bit tedious in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and select the full, select, select the seven here, and then we're going to select the football, and then we're going to go right here to where it says align center and middle, and it brings the seven right square in the middle of the football. All right. So again, one more time, select the 7, shift click on the football, and then right here under our edit tab, we have align center and middle. So if I left click on that, that aligns it perfectly. All right, so for those of you guys that know, what can I do now here to basically make that 7 cut through? And here's what we'll do, guys. Here, actually, here's what we'll do. We'll do this. We'll go here. I'm going to duplicate this image here. And then we'll do it two ways. We'll do Monica. Monica says knockout, so we'll try the knockout. And then we'll do the other one with it just kind of cut through the inside. All right? Tasha, yes, back minus front. Let's go ahead and do that. Back minus front. We can also do a combine, um, but back minus front will do it for us as well. So there's the number seven. All right, so it's cut out. And then down here we have the knockout. So with the knockout, no, Monica, that's perfect. That, no, 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 no. And don't be, no, 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 no. That's exactly what I want to see. I want to see the different... Um, responses and, and ultimately Monica guess what we're gonna try it out to see which one's gonna look better you know ultimately your idea might come might look even better than what I was thinking so don't don't say sorry for that no home don't be apologetic for that at all this is what I like about the webinars that we're able to go in and check it out and test it and see what's gonna come out best all right so now we're gonna select the seven here so Monica we want to try out the knockout so here's our knockout tool all right very easy to use we're going to go ahead and make it maybe point, point 0.02 should be good. It's a small area. All right, so let's try out point 0.02. If it doesn't work, then we'll come back and change that. All right, so let's go ahead and highlight here. And then we're going to do shift click on the background and then do the knockout. All right, so what do you guys think with that point 0.07? You know what I think we need to do? I think we need to move that down a little bit. What do you guys think? So move it down just a tad bit right around there. All right, so I want you guys to help me out with this one. So I'm going to click on the 7. How do I click on the football as well? Tasha, I thought the same thing. So guess what, Monica? I liked your idea better. I liked your idea better. So let's try it out, guys. All right. So what do I need to do? How do I need to? How can I click on the football? Um, and the seven. So I have the seven selected. How can I click on the football as well? Shift click. You got it. You got it, Bobby. Bobby's on top of things today. Bobby is, the, is on top of things. All right. So we're gonna go here. And again, the reason I, I dropped the 7 down some was because it was too close to the laces up here. All right, so again, we're going to go ahead and drop that 7 down. I'm going to go over here to my knockout and left click on knockout. And you know what? Here's what we can do. Just make that all in one color. Bam. That actually looks pretty sweet. Monica, I don't know if you can hear, but I'm clapping. That was awesome. I like that too, Carlos. I agree. That looks pretty sweet. But guess what, guys? This was, again, on the, on the fly. We were able to come up with different ideas. And this is why I like to give you guys a little bit of opportunity to kind of tell me what you guys want to see. All right. So what do you guys think? Not bad, right? Carlos. <laughs> this is the way I just bought the wizard. About an no way. Really? Awesome. 
Awesome, Carlos. If you have any questions, uh, shoot us an email. If you have any questions on the software, Carlos, just uh, make sure you contact us and we'll be able to help you um, kind of understand the program and uh, go from there, right? Glad you liked it, though. So what do you guys think? I really, really, really like this one better. <laughs> so we'll get rid of this one up here. But Monica, that was unbelievable. And again, with this point here, we can go here and make that orange if you wanted to. And now we've matched the entire design. Let's make that orange. And there it is, guys. There is our design. We can even make that top orange as well. All right, so there's our Panthers football. So you guys want to throw this on a, on a mock-up and see how it's going to look? All right, so what do you guys think? What do you guys want to do the, the orange here? You guys want to keep that orange? What uh, I guess want to use some glitter colors for these. Red? You want to do red glitter or just red? All right, we'll do red glitter, red glitter. All right, so we'll go magic glitter colors here. We're going to go to red. So that's going to convert all those to red. What about the, the black here? What do we want to do with black? Let me make sure we have the 16 and the 20 here because there's different shades of black. You guys want to go with white color? Do you guys want to go with uh, something else that's going to make the red pop? What do you guys think? All right, so let's go with a white glitter. White glitter, perfect. All right, so we got white glitter. Ooh, Kelly, electric black. There is not an electric black. That would be pretty difficult to do. Um, unfortunately, we don't. We do have the blue. The, I think the, the blue looks pretty cool, I thought. I like the electric blue. looks pretty cool. Um, I don't think it's going to translate as over as nicely with the glitter color. So if you had like a red electric, that looks pretty cool. But in the, for the time being, let's just go ahead and make, uh, let's go ahead and just change that to white glitter. All right, so we'll go magic glitter, we'll go white. All right, so here's our design. Let's make that realistic sizing. So we'll go 9.5. Make sure that's all inside our workspace here. All right, so we're going to go to mockups. I want to create something basic, all right? So this is going to go directly on the garment. So we're going to go to template, quick product. As you can see here, we have our shirt. So let's select what kind of shirt we want to put it on. So we'll go women's, we'll go a burnout shirt. So we have our burnout shirt down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit save product. And then we're going to go design. Make sure I have my design selected. Let's hit save design. Perfect. And create mock-up. All right, so that's going to create my mock-up. There's my t-shirt. Let's go ahead and make that a black t-shirt. Obviously, we want that design to stand out. Now, for you guys that have been working with the mock-ups, how can I make this image of the shirt stand out like it's an actual dry, or excuse me, uh, burnout shirt. So instead of being just a black clip art, we can combine, we can convert this over to it actually showing the shadows and the actual wrinkles of the shirt. Do you guys know how to do that? All right, so right click, guys, right click, yes. I saw a lot of different, yep, right click, Tasha, exactly. Right click on a color any color so I want to go here and make it yellow bam right click on the yellow blue right click on the blue there you go so we can go white and the white is going to give you that actual burnout with that kind of the heather look and then we can just keep it going right click on any of these colors and you can see it's actually changing just the shading not the actual color of the of the garment you see that so it's actually just that the wrinkles in that actual um that the actual kind of that burnout look of the design of the shirt. So if you guys have ever seen the burnout, this is kind of the exact look that it gives you. It's almost like kind of a faded, um, faded look with a different color. All right. So that's that. So now we're ready to export. Hit export, and then bam, we can send this as a JPEG, PNG, PDF, whatever it is that we need to send it as. We can go ahead and send this to our customer. But of course, guys. Of course. Guess what? Maybe. Oh, let's go back a couple here. Maybe you want to do a little bit more to this design, all right? So maybe there's there's something else we can do to this. And I had a great um, idea brought up here by Monica, all right? And Monica said, how do we go from this point here and add some rhinestones, all right? Honestly, it just depends where you want to add the rhinestones to, all right? So we can go here to the football, and let's say we want to place some rhinestones around the football. Now, you can see it's a weird image there, so it's going to come out. There's going to be a little bit of editing, but realistically, I can go here, 0.07. Add stones, one island, bam, oh, one island, hit island fill, and that's going to add my stones around it. So what I could do is maybe move this over some, control that, bam, move that over a little bit, right around there. We'll go here, same thing. Now I'm going to get a little bit quick here, guys, just because this is a little bit off the actual topic, but it's a good concept. It's a good addition to the customization part of it. So I'm going to go here, clear our paths, 
And then, of course, I would delete these stones in the inside here. I don't need these. All right, bam. And again, this is a small image, guys, but not to worry. We can delete a couple of these. Highlight here. And then, bam, magic respace. That's respace. There's some. Now we got some stones around the football. So again, that was a great idea as well. You can just go ahead and, uh, or just yeah, or just do the Panthers. Exactly. The Panthers are gonna be a little bit more difficult. All right. So watch. See that it's a little bit more difficult because it's very small. All right. So yeah, it still looks nice. So I didn't see. Let's go here. Clear paths. Let's get rid of some of these stones here. We don't need. All right. Bam. And the only issue with this, guys, is going to be now we have basically the the text here. we got to move it down some. All right, so that would be the next thing is kind of adjusting it. But again, because it goes back to the fact that everything can be adjusted still, we can move all this down a little bit. And you can see it kind of cent centers it for me. So I'm moving this down a little bit. Put that perfectly down in the center there. Let's move this down some. And again, this is... This is all actually great, great ideas that you guys brought up there. All right, and then move this down some. Oh, don't forget the shadow. So click on the shadow back here. And then with my arrow keys, I can just nudge it down some. All right, so now what we have here is our stones. And again, I can go in there and adjust these stones how I want. But the biggest thing with this is you'll see that it's trying to put the stones inside of these areas here. That's where you're not getting a perfect straight line, which is fine because we can always use that magic respace tool to fix that. So we can highlight this, go here, bam, not or select a couple more stones on this path here, magic respace, and that cleans up that section there. And again, you can just, just different ways to add um, text to it. Now I did see, what if you just do a TRB font? All right. So I like the fact that you asked that question. All right. Because that's going to bring us into the next part of our magic templates. All right. So we've got about 15 minutes and this is what I want to show you guys is We've done a magic template now with just the vinyl fonts, but now I'm going to show you guys how to do it with some of our rhinestone fonts. All right, it there it's it doesn't come out nearly as good, but it does work. All right, and I'm going to show you guys how that works. Um, perfect. Does anybody have, so to this point, does anybody have any questions as far as what we've done here and utilizing the magic templates? Again, the most important thing with the magic templates, make sure you select the template first and then the text. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and bring something else in here and see what we can do. All right, so we have here. All right, so this is a little bit different template here. Oh, it's pretty nice actually. That's a nice one. Actually, even it comes with the with the rhinestone file at the bottom. Not bad. All right, so this is a different uh, another design that we have created, and we'll just use these three for now. All right, so we'll just use these three for now. All right, so what if you want to add rhinestones, a rhinestone text instead? Let's see what happens with that. All right. So let's go ahead and use a word. Now, here's the one thing that we're going to be running into, guys, is with a vector file, the biggest thing is that we can fit, fit a vector file and resize it as we want, right? Where in this case, you're going to have to find the right size of a rhinestone font for it to work. All right, so what we can do is type in, you know, um, let's see, navy. Okay, so we'll do navy. We'll do navy, and then let me check. I'm going to type in TRW, I think 135 is a good font, and we'll click that. Now notice it, it doesn't show me the font because I needed to type in lowercase, so I'm just going to switch it to lowercase. Alright, so there we go. So we got navy. Alright, now here's the thing. With this, guys, I need to make sure I have this at the right size. So what I want to do now, if you guys have ever worked with the rhinestone fonts, we need to do one more thing to the font to be able to convert it over to a rhinestone file. Do you guys know what that is? You got to resize it, resize it. So by resizing it, watch this. Now it's going to ask me, not all stones are 0.130. Would you like to replace stones? I'm going to hit yes. All right, so there's the realistic size of my design. So that could probably fit right in this one. All right, so we'll use this one here. So with that text, though, what happens is no longer a true type font. So it, it won't actually be, we won't be able to actually utilize that magic the magic templates tool because it needs to be a true type font all right so the reason I did this is to get the actual size of what it should be at all right because with the rhinestone font you, they have to be a certain size in order for the actual circles to be the correct size so in this case 0 0.130 matches my SS10 stones 0 0.130 all right so what I need to do 
is convert this back to a true type font, so a normal typeable font. All right. Now, do you guys know how to do that yet on the wizard? Do you guys know the special tool in the wizard that will allow me to convert this rhinestone file here into a text? Oh, you're a good Tasha. Tasha said, "Click the T." And if you guys don't don't know where the T is, the T is located very, very, very small in the bottom right hand corner. You guys see that T down there at the bottom? All right, make sure you guys see that T because it's going to be very important here. All right. So I'm going to left click on that, oh, and it's going to freeze up on us, of course. All right, so I think I did one too many clicks there. So let's go ahead and go back to this, uh, just retype it out. All right, and then we're going to go back here to the T. All right, so by clicking the T, notice I can now retype a word in here. But the good thing is it doesn't resize it for me. So that is still, if I click on resize design, it's not going to change the size of my text there, all right? But again, the reason I needed to click that T was to go back to a font format, all right? If I hit resize, it converts it into a rhinestone format, all right? So that's very important to know. Does that and does everybody get why we had to do, um, why we converted it first to a rhinestone file and then kind of brought it back? Did you guys understand that part? Because that's very important. And that's just, in the way that rhinestone fonts work, you need to, exactly, Monica, for sizing. That's all it's about. Because what happens is if I don't size this correctly, when I cut this image out or this template out, guess what's going to happen? Your stones aren't going to fit into the circles. All right, so we need to make sure we keep the sizing, the appropriate sizing for that particular font. All right, so now let's go ahead and, what's the first thing we need to do to be able to utilize that template, the magic templates? All right, you got it. Click on the pink first, and that's very important. Template first, shift click on the navy. Let's go right here to magic templates, right click. And here's the thing, guys. You see what happened here? All right, you see what's happening here? Don't worry, because we can still go from this point. I can go right here to resize, and then replace stones is going to replace them for me. All right, so let's go here, and then replace them. And you can see it replaces my stones for me. Now here's the thing, with the rhinestones guys, this is the only issue we're going to run into. All right, And this, this is one of the reasons I wanted to show you. You see what's happening here? We're just having a little bit more of a kind of a faded look to my font because the way, the, the, the way that the stones work is basically the spacing is going to change, but it's not actually going to add stones to it. So if this is the look you guys are trying to go for, that would be a way to utilize the stones, rhinestone font with the magic templates. All right, so it just depends. I mean, this font in particular here, I don't think looks that well for this for the templates. So you're gonna have to find something that's a little bit more full to be able to do this. All right, but uh, that was referring to the question that we had uh, as far as what can we use? Um, can we use uh, rhinestone font? So you can use the rhinestone font, which is I'm really glad you guys asked that because that was part of the webinar today. Now I do have a couple tricks here that I could show you guys how to bring and kind of close the spacing off here. Do you guys want to see that real quick? You can use a single line font as well. Can you add stones? Suzanne, you got it. You got it. So let me show you guys. What I could do, all right, so what I could do is simply select all these stones here, all right, so we can select all the ones here, right? So you guys can see we're selecting all these stones here. Oh, what happened? All right, so again, select all the ones on this path here. I'm going to go right here to my magic respace and left click on magic respace. So now what I can do is hit the up arrow and add stones to it. So that's good. We can do the same thing right here. Add stones. All right. And then we can basically just keep doing it all the way down. So click on all these here. Magic respace. Add some stones. Get rid of a stone. That's too, too much going on there. We can move this down if we wanted to here a little bit. And again, even though it's going to take some editing, it'll still be less than if you try to place the stones afterwards. All right, so that's good. You know.